I'm so tapped to have long until let's play Legend of Dark Witch 1. This is the PC version. Uh, I originally played the 3DS version of this, but um, can't record that with my current equipment. A review copy of this was provided by the developer. Um, for better or worse, I started playing Legend of Dark Witch 2 a few days ago, and wow, it is a huge improvement over this game, and I love it a lot. I can't currently show it. Parker! I've discovered that crinkly things scare Parker off my desk. So if you hear crinkly things, I'm averting Parker interruptions. And so this is basically a Mega Man game with Gradius um, elements to um, upgrade your character. It'll be easier to show than explain. Um, <coughs> I'm going to talk a lot about Dark Witch 2, but I'm going to try to explain the majority of the first game before we get into that. Um, this first game, um, these these games are both very cheap. Um, I forget the exact price on Steam, but like Legend of Dark Witch 2 is seven dollars on the 3DS. I believe Dark Witch 1 is also seven bucks, but it's been on sale for like I'm not sure if the sale is still on, but it was like three dollars. Um, very much worth every penny, perhaps unsurprisingly at that point. Um, the PC port isn't super amazing, but it really it, it works. Um, we've got, you can switch your language back into Japanese if you want. I, I'm not sure what the, I guess that's Taiwanese. I don't, I wouldn't, I don't recognize that, but. Right, don't change, up. Oh, I broke something. Oh no, that's just something else entirely. <clears throat> Never mind. My recording software does not like me changing resolution, so that was, that was a bad idea. Anyway, um. This does support gamepad. There, you have to go in here and enable gamepad. I think it's, it, it's the initial setup is a little awkward. Um, one thing that's really cool in this game, so yeah, controls are fine. You can change a lot of options that very few platformers let you change. Um, it is of course a 2D platformer like Mega Man, that's why I said it's a Mega Man-like game. Um, you can change your jump height based on you know how long you press, or you can just have it you know jump your max height every time you press it. I definitely prefer you know variable stuff um, you can also change how the camera scrolls which is really cool so like um, the way I prefer it um, I wanted to play this on normal but um, I would either have to get a lot better or grind a little bit uh, so I'm just gonna play on easy you, you get the gist of things um, actually I think I'm gonna start with this character um, so you you can pick your bosses, and I think enemies are weak to you know each other's. It's got the Mega Man, you know, weapon system going on with the you know some bosses are weak to some crap. I don't really I haven't researched what who was weak to what. I never actually liked that aspect of Mega Man because it feels really lame, in my opinion. Because you know it forces this order upon characters and. Uh, uh, some enemies go down way, way too easy if you use the right ability. Uh, so I, I usually just use this liner. Comet shot's actually pretty good. Why? Button changes. Why do I not? Oh, I'm thinking of Dark Witch 2 already. Um, I don't have comment yet. Um, all right, let me step back here. So the camera controls. Um, you can actually set it so that like set it to two distance. So with this, you can see ahead of yourself a bit more, but the camera um, sort of, you know, follows your character at a certain distance. Uh, personally, the I like being able to see forward, but ah, what I really prefer is the camera to just be tied completely to the character, and there's no scrolly nonsense going on at all. Uh, there are certain situations where being able to see a little bit more forward would probably be a little helpful, but uh, I've played the game enough that I know most of what's coming. I'm more used to Legend of Arcade Witch 2 now at this point. But uh, it's really cool that the game lets you, you know, control your camera scroll like that. That's what I get in that. Um, one annoying thing about this game, so there's these purest Yegas that you collect that upgrade your Gradius bar down there. Um, they are completely invisible unless you shoot them. And as you can see, I'm just sort of random, rapid firing with this weapon. It, it, it'll find about half of the hidden Segas that way. But um, you really do need a guide to get all of them. Whereas in Legend of Dark Witch 2, they leave a little sparkle. 
and uh, it's a lot easier to find all of them. There's also an item you can purchase with your little butterflies in the bottom right there in the second game that lets you help I lo locate the uh, hidden items. So the second game handles that a lot better. It was one of my bigger complaints about this game. Another complaint about this game, um, all right, let actually let's go over the Gradius bar here. So somewhat like Gradius, the very first one is speed up. Um, and not all enemies deal contact damage, by the way. In fact, at least in Legend of Dark Witch 2, you can actually walk right up and touch the bosses. It's not always a great idea, but uh, you can do it. So yeah, the Gradius bar, um, as you beat enemies, you get those little butterflies, and then that adds to your permanent currency meter in the bottom right, and it also fills up your install gauge in the bottom left there. Um, so as you can see, we, we got some speed ups and some wing power ups. In this game, a certain level of speed and wing is actually required to do a lot of alternate, you know, route platforming. In the second game, it's, you know, it focuses less on you installing stuff. Of course, there's no English voice acting, but it's nice they kept the uh, Japanese voice acting. So I'll let them talk for this one here. ああ、それね。君は探偵か何かで事件について調べてるってことかしら。いや、探偵がわざわざこんなところまで来なんか。寂しい。ということは寒いから知ってることだけを早く喋ってくれればいいんだけど。だったら体を動かして体温を上げる
Uh, you've got more enemy variety. You've got more of everything. It's really, it's a perfect sort of iterative sequel that, uh, you know, it fixes pretty much all of my complaints about this game. Um, actually, let me address one of my complaints here. One of my complaints is that in this game, um, if we use these special abilities, as you can see in the bottom right there, it's actually using my install bar. So you basically never want to use your special, you know, the boss skills, except against the boss that they're weak against, which I didn't bother to learn. So we're going to see almost no usage of those. I don't, you know, in Mega Man games in general, I don't tend to use boss skills anyway. Um, that's, uh, it, it took the Mega Man Zero and ZX series to cure me of that, honestly, even in the real Mega Man games. There we go. Um, I actually think I could have jumped that gap with Wing, but whatever. Um, hmm. Well. Also, oh, these things totally look like crystal, don't they? Probably a Siega up here, but uh, eh. I'm not gonna. There we go. Which one is that? Line level up. That's good. Okay. Um, another complaint I have about this game: um, you can't switch between line and comment without installing. You know, you have to buy the you have to buy the switch to comment strike, and then upgrade comment. And. Um, that just makes Comet a lot more expensive and fiddly. So I might forget to use Comet entirely. Also, I really like the, um, the art style of the main artist. We don't see it as much in this game, but uh, they do some good stuff. Fight time, as always. Also, this game is very speedrun friendly. Um, as you can see, there's a little timer in the bottom there. Legend of Dark Witch 2 actually has what they call a speedrun card, which shows all of the upgrades you got. Um, it shows your time on each individual stage. It shows your difficulty. Pretty much all you would need to show, like, oh, I did a, you know, low percent speedrun or whatever. Game's actually a little too easy, in my opinion, on easy. Um, as you can see there. Oh, yeah, and... That's our achievement for uh, beating the enemy without taking any damage. Um, a big... <coughs> My biggest problem with this game's normal difficulty is that if you get to a boss and then die, you know, your install meter goes back to zero and then you don't, you know, suddenly you deal insanely less damage than before. Also, we can upgrade... <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you can upgrade these skills, but since they cost our installed meter, we're probably never going to use them. So I usually just try to max up the uh, Trez skill here, because that, that has the double benefit of letting us use the install bar more, and it also gives us more money to use in the shop. So there's almost no reason not to max that out first. Uh, also the shop is way more complicated in Dark Witch 2. Um, you can upgrade these way higher levels. You can customize your install bar in Dark Witch 2. Which lets you, like, there's alternate versions of pretty much everything in the install bar. Like, instead of power, which just increases your power, your, you know, weapon damage, um, you can get a shot from the back. You can do a double shot. Um, there's a third option between liner and comet strike. Um, for Zuzu, it's like, um, it's like a short range charged up shot. Um, there's also an alternate for wing, which is a dash that is super hard to control. I really wish I could show you Dark Witch 2. Uh, this game's still worth playing, and uh, I do still recommend it, but uh, Dark Witch 2 is a lot better. And I also really like the danger, the, you know, warning that stuff is coming at you. That was a pretty easy Sega. Um, if you're playing this game on a difficulty and, you know, you're having difficulty, you can just run through each stage. Oh, crap. Get the Sega 
get some trez, you know, your money butterflies here. And you can just lose or exit out, and uh, you keep all of that. So, unlike most Mega Man games, you can grind, and it's fairly effective. Um, and I'm sure I would be fine if I were playing normal and I ground a little bit. Uh, I just didn't really want to have to do that on camera. I might do, you know, a lunatic difficulty. I don't think I've unlocked it on PC yet. Um, once I've practiced more, I might do a more impressive playthrough or something. Um, I'll definitely play at least on, you know, proper Mega Man difficulty for two. But uh, I really wanted to show this off, and I think I'm going to do a written review of Dark Witch 2. I do hope it comes to PC, but I'm not sure if they'll do that or when. The first game has ported to PC. I think it's on Vita and is coming to PS4. So I assume they're planning to bring, you know, the second game. I really hope so, because, you know, second game, even better in my opinion. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm not sure it's opinion. It's, like, so much better. So here's one of the things that is annoying about how this game handles its secrets. Um, I don't have enough speed-ups to make that jump. Uh, that's not really a problem in the second game. So there we go. Now I can get it. Also, you can sort of farm. Certain enemies respawn. See, now I can get it. And I believe I actually have an extra speed up because the install, the auto install will not um, level up speed beyond two because, you know, your character can get a little... Oh, I saw that coming. Um, oh, yeah. And if this seems easy, it's because I am playing on, you know, easy mode and enemy... And NB behaviors change, um, and everything is significantly easier. It's not like, you know, just a damage multiplier. It does that too, but you gain, um, your install meter goes up higher, and at least in Legend of Dark Witch 2, a lot of enemies aren't even very harmful in easy, but they're very challenging on normal. Like, there'll be stuff that pops up and hits you if you just run straight through the level in normal. Um, and it's just completely harmless if you do that in easy. You actually have to slow down in order for them to actually be a threat. So, um, it makes things kind of too easy, but it, it's also really nice that there is that option for, you know, crazy easy stuff. Um, also, obviously, this is a 3DS game ported to PC, so that's why the interface looks a little weird. Um, everything is in sync, you know, in, in terms of style on the, well, mostly in, ter in sync in the 3DS version. Looks a tiny bit weird on PC, but I do appreciate the higher res character portraits because, uh, like I said, the art style for those is really good. Because I shouldn't talk over them. <laughs> Zizo is so into it. I also really like the, um... Let's see, we would de be dealing like half this much damage in normal. I almost feel guilty. I'll let her get off some attacks here just to show off. Ow. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> Um, I really like the two character portrait, you know, talking portrait, like the conversational um, dialogue system they have for the bosses there. It's sort of nice to be able to see both of them at once. Especially since the dialogue, like, is actually pretty back and forth. I think we can fit one more in, then I'll do a second video. That is all. Oh. We're gonna grind just a teeny bit. So I can get, you know, the 40 trez there. Oh, an interesting thing the second game does. Um, oh, this is also so weird. You you keep, if I, since I used Comet in the last level, I start with Comet now. So if you used Comet in the last level, you have a slight benefit if you plan to use it more in this, you know, in the next level. Which is kind of weird. Uh... And also, speaking of weird, Comet has this, the weirdest area of effect, you know, that not really sine wave thing going on. And the, um, 
it makes a lot more sense in the uh, second game. The second game also does reuse in a very good way, in my opinion. It's, uh, nothing gets too old. They, they reuse certain bosses, but not all of them. They, um... They, um... They reuse some enemies, but the majority of enemies are new. And, uh... It just feels really good, and I don't have the biggest problem with reuse, but uh, it, it's about, you know, handling it cleverly, and in my opinion, second game really does a good job with it. And it does it while, you know, the biggest thing about reuse is making things feel cheap, and it's very clear that the second game is a big step up in quality and stuff. And I, I really, I really love small devs that just, you know, they have a good idea, and the first game, you know, they didn't have the budget, or, you know, maybe the know-how, or the whatever, to get everything perfect the first try, because I mean, you, know, you don't have infinite budgets, you don't have infinite people, but then they make a second game that takes all that potential from that first game, and they really make it work, and... Why is my meter... Okay, it was going for power. The, the way the auto install works is it gives you one of each, except, um... It limits itself to two installs of speed. It seems to have ignored... That's annoying. It ignored my wing. It doesn't do that in Dark Witch 2. See, I'm used to playing Dark Witch 2 now. Um, like I said, I do recommend playing this game, but if you find things annoying, do note that the second game, it, it probably fixes everything you complain about. Um, but, you know, the, the second game doesn't completely replace this game, like, especially the levels. I like a lot of the levels in this game. And honestly, it, it's surprising how much harder the game is just because the install meter it fills more slowly. Because I have pretty crazy strength right now, and I think there's a secret down here. Or maybe it's just an alternate path, I'm not sure. Oop. Yeah, I, I like this disappearing block gimmick. They usually have some kind of gimmick in each of the levels, as you, you know, would expect out of this sort of game. Also, not only does this game have, you know, a proper Mega Man, you know, kick your butt hard difficulty, it also has, like, a pretty good, you know, Supremo hard mode above that. Always be suspicious of paths like that. Um, this pure, uh, the... Those I, those hidden items we collect are called purest yegas. They um, some of them are hidden. Some of them are hidden in ways that is kind of obvious. A lot of them, unfortunately, aren't. They're hidden a lot better in the second game, like I said. Of course, she's from overseas. She's wearing a sailor hat. People from overseas are legally required to wear sailor hats. この国で死が誰かに盗まれてるんだって。何か詳しいことを知らないかな。どうして私が知ってるわけないでしょ。そうか。残念。何か手がかりがつかめたらいいなと思って。でも、ジーソー。そんなことまでこんなに大暴れし
really want to have to bother with, you know, any grinding, at least on camera. I might do a lunatic difficulty run, like I said, but uh, for now I'll just finish the game. I'll probably, you know, there'll be a second video where I go through the last few bosses here. There's, of course, a Dr. Wily stage. I forget if this game has a boss rush or not. The second one does. And it actually shows you which bosses you're going to fight, which... How many Mega Man games to take before? No, did they even ever show you which bosses you were fighting? I... I don't think even... No, even ZX Advent doesn't show you that. I'm not sure if... Do Mega Man 10? 9 and 10 do that? Uh, doesn't really matter. But yeah, this is Legend of Dark Witch 1. Um, stay tuned for the end, and uh, hopefully sometime I'll be able to show you Dark Witch 2. I'm going to publish a review eventually on my website for Dark Witch 2. And I also already started a guide on my site. I'll put a link to that. If you're playing Dark Witch 2, uh, I've got a bunch of information on getting some of the playing level challenges, um, some of the locations of the hidden Segas, uh, and just what to do in general. Oh, and what I totally forgot. One cool thing that Dark Witch 2 does, um, let's just show a quick peek of this next level while I'm blabbing here. Um, one of the cool things Dark Witch 2 does is when you get a game over, it gives you a little bit of that in-game currency to unlock stuff. When I say in-game currency, like, there's no microtransactions. It's just stuff you use to unlock secrets. Uh, it gives you a little bit of that as a pity prize, and it unlocks a skill in that playthrough. So, like, if you're doing super poorly, um, you can get cheats all the way up to actual invincibility. Uh, it disables the achievement system, of course, and, um, oops. It also, um, you can also change the difficulty level down at any point in time. You can't change the difficulty level back up, but you can change it down. And I always really like that as a, you know, mechanic, you know, so you don't get stuck into, oh, uh, you don't end up getting, you know, stuck into a difficulty level that's too high. Oh, before I forget, come on, find me an enemy with a projectile. You can do a block. Ugh, those aren't. You can do a block if you have really good timing. There we go. If you press right or left, here we go. Right or left, just as the attack hits Zuzu's sprite, you can do a block. I always forget to do it. Uh, it's pretty precise, you know. Don't entirely depend on it unless you're really good. But I really like that as a feature. Anyway, stay tuned next time and we'll finish this up.